This is Techno Enthusiasts, Seattle's premier geek podcast network. The German news agency. We interrupt this program to bring you a news bulletin from Washington. The White House has just announced. Here is a news bulletin. Shots have reportedly been fired. Here's another late development, and this news keeps coming in. This is an NBC News hotline report. Special this report. Is... Verdicts, verdicts, violence. National Guard troops. We interrupt our program to bring you a special broadcast. We interrupt this broadcast. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you this important... Hotel, and welcome to my side of the world, where you can find discuss issues on self-empowerment, meditation, self-sustainability living, autonomy, sovereignty, divine law, legalese, and other related issues. Hotep, and welcome to my sovereign world. I am that I am. Some call me Haru with my co host. People call me Nas. Shalom. Indeed, indeed. So we're just going to get uh, into some conversation, talk about some issues we always talk about, how to live autonomously, as we would say. Indeed. But um, let's get into it, brother. Well, again, we just wanted to have a conversation, um, or I should make say make one of our conversations privy to you. And, uh, yes, indeed. Because we have, I mean, we have these conversations all the time about breaking down the pros and cons of certain things that you know that that have been taught out, or things that we find in law, or, uh, and basically how to live autonomously. I mean, there are a lot of people out there that are looking to live what they believe is the sovereign life, and um, you know, we we look yeah. at that as well. You know, sovereign people have to look at that definition of that term and actually look see what it means. Mm-hmm and then apply it to their life to see if that's something they actually want to pursue because there's a there's a difference and the responsibilities are different um and then you know the contradictions i mean if you want to get into you know the issue of sovereign citizen oh yes that's definitely a big issue especially when we have um the elite so-called the elite phrasing it really you know using that phrase and putting people under that jurisdiction per se indeed uh, a lot of people don't realize that there are different definitions of the term of many terms i mean if you look in a dictionary you see a lot of terms that say one you have definition one two and sometimes all the way down to Mm -hmm. 15 20 uh matter of fact there was an entire book written on a definition of uh (laughs) includes so but you know going back to citizen as one of the definitions of citizen is a subject and so how are you going to be a ruling or a lawmaking subject? Come on. You know, Come that's, on. that's a contradictory in a phrase within itself. Um, it's like having a, a blue, uh, a blue red sky. You know what I mean? It's, it just doesn't <laughs> quite go together. You know, they're opposite. So, um, you know, we have to look at those things and that, and that term comes from, you know, as you were, uh, so eloquently stated before is that it comes from, um, you know, the time frame in the 80s and 90s when, you know, people were so fed up with how the government was moving that they were, they were, they had their own sovereign movement, if you want to call it a movement to, of the people. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Um, you know, we have those throughout the decades, power to the people movements and whatnot. And this particular one, or at this particular time, a lot of the Montana Freemen and Posse Comitatus and, and so forth, a lot of them, you know, lost their freedoms because they were, to me, t- tricked into... Uh, going, stepping beyond the realm of sovereignty and doing certain things within commerce or uh, yeah, certain and things that's within commerce that were actually right illegal. There. You know, that were illegal. And and you're right. And that's mm-hmm. what made them, when people don't get that there is a line that someone can cross, that by you crossing that line, they, they, are, they have the right or at least the privilege to make a presumption on your status. So, for example, uh-huh. so for example if you go into a traffic court and say, you know, uh, you know, you answer a ticket. Let's say you get a ticket and, you know, uh, get pulled over and you get a ticket. And uh, you go in there to say, hey, I'm not guilty, you know. Uh, 
you know, I'm driving. I wasn't driving. Driving means this, blah blah blah. Well, by you stepping in there without stating, without qualifying <laughs> your 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 actions, you've allowed them to presume that you are acting within commerce. Mm-hmm. Period. And just because you go in and say, well, driving means this and that means that, that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything to that judge because he's saying what you you're saying to him what you believe or what you state, and the other side is in disagreement or hasn't stated that they agree to it. So. Um, indeed, indeed, right. So I mean, you can you, you can you know you can take it from there. But the point is, is that uh, you know we discern ourselves. We know the differences between um, the actions, the, the actions that can take you across that line, and actions that that where you maintain your autonomy. You know, and again, that's yeah, and that know. and that's key. And that's key because a lot of us, like I say, most of us ain't even really trying to. We want to. We want to try to act like we're responsible but we're not acting accordingly you know and that's the problem we're not acting as if we were so-called sovereign or autonomous independent let's let's qualify that for people what does that mean because you know you tell people to do their own research and then that's smart that's that's very smart but sometimes a lot of people are intimidated they don't know where to start when you look at Mm -hmm. the realm of statutes um, and there's millions of statutes. So where do I start? Indeed. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, start with the source. The source of government power is what? The people. And how is that Indeed. source regulated or conveyed over to government? It's regulated and conveyed over by the Declaration of Independence and the constitutions, regardless of whether it's state or um, or uh, the U.S. Constitution. Right. Now, one other thing that people forget about, there's another source, is... Each state has an enabling act, and in those enabling acts, it tells the states what they are, con- what their conditions of entering into statehood or entering into the union on, as a state uh, entail. And those states have to follow those conditions because if I say, sure. uh, if we get into an agreement, you say, "Look, man, I want you to give me fifty dollars, or you know, whatever the case is," and I say, "Well, you know, I'll do that on the condition that you come cut my yard." <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you know, just hypothetically, and. If, indeed, if you indeed. don't want to do that condition or you agree <laughs> to that condition and let's say every, you know, every month or every two months you want $50. Well, if you stop cutting my yard, then I go back and pull up that agreement and say, well, look, I don't owe you $50 because our condition was is that if you wanted $50 from me, you were going to cut my yard. You stopped cutting my yard five years <laughs> ago. I'm not giving you $50 anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing uh-huh. with the enabling acts. It's like, look. What we don't realize is that these states, um, and you do want to differentiate between federal and a state, uh, federal territory and jurisdiction and a state territory and jurisdiction. And the reason why is because, uh, well, we'll get into that in a minute, but um, the Enabling Acts, again, regulate how the state can move forward in the realm of their power, right? Um, Mm -hmm. And so what a lot of states do is they overstep those bounds. And I'll give you an example. Traffic laws. (laughs) <laughs> traffic laws are an overstepping yeah. of the bounds of state government because um who pays for the for the roads here in washington for example we pay for the roads by a state uh, by a excuse me a uh, gas tax yes. right i know in for example in some places like new york they have tolls and tolls pay for the words uh, excuse me for the roads but yeah, like just for, like florida i guess florida too yeah yeah. yeah, and, and yeah, they probably totally. have a combination of things, you know, that pay for the roads. But, uh, for example, here it's exclusively right now. It's exclusively set that the gas tax is set for to pay for the building of the roads. And so, who pays the gas tax? The people. people. Yeah, people that go get gas and fill the car. Get up. Gas. So exactly, <laughs> if you get gas, you pay for the roads. So that means if you pay for it, you own it. The, remember, the no government doubt. doesn't own anything; they're the trustee. Yeah. Right. Never. So, can the grantor tell the trustee what to do? Mm-mm. Yes, they can. The Never grantor, been. the grantor tells the trustee oh, what oh, to do because it's, it's he yeah. sets whoever the trustee. Or, yeah, I'm the sorry, grantor, whoever yeah. the grantor is. Right, <laughs> not the grantee, the grantor. Whoever the grantor is is the one that sets the rules for the indenture. The trustee doesn't have to agree to those rules or those uh, those indent- terms of the indenture. They only have to agree to take the post. They're required mm-hmm. to follow the the rules. Or the terms of that indenture, and any a police officer that approaches you is approaching you as a trustee. And the minute you let him know that you are not the anyone other than the grantor, he's supposed to react a certain way. But we know police are not trained that way. 
Same okay. thing with, uh, with uh, judges. They're not trained that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, you know, um, for example, um, um, you know, again, what we were stating before is that a lot of people are look, is looking for sovereignty and they're looking for, you know, how to live, you know, free, if you want to call it. But they, but they want to, but they think that living life free is free and they think it's simple. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you. That's not true. It is more simple. It is much more simple for you to live as a subject within their society than it is for you to live autonomously. Sure, sure. Because it requires <laughs> it requires more responsibility for you to know what you're doing and what you're talking about. And there's other opportunities too. That's the crazy thing, and that's what a lot of people don't understand that it that it is other ways of doing things instead of this standard convenience. Oh, I need to go this route to get my money from the bank. Boom, boom, boom. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Or use this credit card, debit card, whatever the case may be. Indeed, and that's, that's the that's crazy right. thing. We're, we we are we're a society built on convenience, and Indeed. since that convenience has built been so uh, entailed and programmed into us, it is very tough to get out of it. It's very tough to get. Oh out yeah, of it. when you got people lined up for a, a phone, yeah. you know, oh, my day goodness. before, just stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, man. they lined up for a week. You know before, something you know, wrong? Be the first yeah, one. you know something mentally, psycholo- psychologically yeah. wrong with them. You know, you know it's know? interesting. The uh, Boeing just had its first uh, Dreamliner flight of its dream. I think it's called the Dreamliner. Oh, straight up. <laughs> yeah, they just had their first flight um, uh, this this past week, earlier this week. And you know these people were paying sixteen thousand dollars, thirty two thousand dollars, you know, uh, for a ticket. Some people pay thirty two thousand dollars for a ticket just to be the first one to fly on this Dreamliner. Some people that I know there was a couple that they just, you know, this is all they would do. They go around and fly, and they use their uh, miles, um, a lot of their <laughs> frequent flyer miles, and then of course they put up a lot of the, some funds for it. That's why it only cost them sixteen thousand for uh, for their two tickets. Um, and it costs pe- other people much more, but they just wanted to be yeah. the first ones, and you know, to each his own. You know, that's what you want to do. Cool. Um, but you have to realize that a lot of what that entails, and we're not talking about that specific instance. You know, I'm just talking about the mentality there to go along with yes. what you were saying. Yes. Is that that's typically not someone that's autonomous, or you know, yeah, sovereign. it's the value, man. I mean, really, when it comes down to its value, what we value, it, indeed. And you it's know, like, that's, think, that's probably. The the saddest thing in the world, I mean, when you think about it, because a lot of us value the wrong things. We value a 62-inch TV, yeah, you know, indeed, indeed. instead and, of, you know, getting free or starting a garden in the back or whatever, you know. Indeed. It's crazy. And, and you know? the reason that we bring that up, you know, a reason we even talk about that is because there's a lot of people out there that believe that filing a UCC-1 or Ooh. filing a, an executive trustee letter or uh, something to that nature is the resolution to your problems. And I'll tell you this, there is no silver bullet. We're not dealing with a werewolf here. There is no silver bullet. <laughs> and even if you think there is a silver bullet, let's say we are dealing with a werewolf that's a beast, you have to cast and put that together, put together that bullet. You have to put the right amount of, um, you got to put the casing, you got to build a casing right around it. You got to put the bullet cast melt it. down. You, you got to cast it. Well, yeah, yeah. You got to, all the details <laughs> of casting it, you know, with the gunpowder and everything. So when we say there's no silver bullet, we just mean that no one's going to hand you a silver bullet and that that's going to be the answer. If there is no simple answer like that. You know what the simple answer is? It's knowledge. There's a reason that throughout all of the, you know, and again, I'm not a Bible thumper, but throughout all of the scriptures, not just the Bible, but the Quran, the Sahuf, the Book of uh, the Dead, and uh, the, the Epic of Gilgamesh, and so on and so forth, Sumerian tablets, all of them, all of them talk about knowledge being the key. Come on. It is a consistent message. One of the consistent messages is that knowledge is the key. And knowledge requires your due diligence and your studying. It does. That's it. That's it. Right. All right. And so, yeah, there, so in essence, I, I guess I can retract that. There is a silver bullet, but that silver bullet requires you to put it together, and you're not. There's no exactly. store for you to go buy it at. <laughs> you know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Um, exactly. I'll give you an example um, about knowledge. Just for example, out here in Washington, um, people pay property taxes on their on their on their houses, and I'm telling you, okay. it's interesting because. In Washington, they have what is called the uh, Revised Codes of Washington, which is the uh, the 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 um, statutory, or excuse me, the encoded statutory. Um, excuse me, the, yeah, the encoded statu- uh, the encoded um, 
rendition of law that's created by the legislation that is called statutes that supposedly support the uh, supported by the uh, their constitutional powers and, and uh, powers relegated to them through the enabling act and so forth right okay so um but one of the things that provides them the authority to do the things that they do with uh property taxes is rcw84 if you look at rcw84 it allows it authorizes um it authorizes the legislator to charge um or collect um property taxes you know from certain individuals or certain entities but what the issue is is that <laughs> and 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 let before I even go into that let me bring up this bring this up and this is another deception or a way that the government deceives people we got a flyer that said that because the property values um went down have dropped that they that the government has lost um has lost revenue and therefore wants to raise taxes um through the utilities so they want to take utility taxes up from 1% up to 3%, right? Something to that nature. And so people are looking at it and say, you know, hey, I feel them. They, you know, they've lost revenue. But hold on. They were collecting more <laughs> revenue than they were supposed to. They were unduly mm-hmm. enriching themselves. And let me tell you why. Because according to RCW 84.04.075, it defines the term person. And according to RCW 84, all persons that own a property or own or own residential property, um, our own property in the state of Washington is required to pay a property tax. But guess what the word person means? According to RCW 84.04.075, persons means um, a corporation, a trustee, association, or other entity as, entity as such. Wait a minute. <laughs> Which one of those said <laughs> private individual? Which one no. of them? None of them. Not one of them. So there is no authority for any county or any state agency to collect um, property taxes property against people. Tax. So wait a minute. Yeah. So why are they saying that we lost revenue because of the um, the loss of value of the property? So now we want to tax everybody through utility taxes. Pay the through price. Yeah. Pay the so price. I'm like, well, wait a minute. You now trying to say, okay, well, we weren't authorized to do it before, but let's do it. Let's let's uh let's conv- or transfer that power over to something else and trick Come you on. into making it now so that it is we are authorized. To yeah, and I wish people look at the subtle the little subtle things like the term itself, persons, ain't no such word. It, That's no such word in colloquial English. Not in colloquial like English say. today, no. The the definition this is one reason that English is is a uh some people call English Bad. a bastard language. Um <laughs> you know, and and, and it's interesting. I didn't. I learned that people call English a bastard language when mm-hmm. I started studying uh, cultural anthropology, and we had to study the languages of the other of, of various other cultures, and to studying you know uh, uh, Aramaic or Spanish and things of that nature. You you know you learn that people actually consider historians or um, those in the learned ones, if you want to call them, in in linguistics, uh, they realize that English is a it's a very interesting, I'll just say that, it's a very interesting language. It's a very difficult language to pick up because of all of the, uh, and, and every language has its, its dialects and things of that nature, but sure. uh, but English is very special in its sense that there's various forms of English. You have the cultural and subcultural. You have the national or ethnic, like you have uh, England English. You have Irish Irish English, you have Scotland English, and you have mm-hmm. Southern English in the United States, you have North, Northeastern English, Northwestern, and so on and so forth. All these different dialects, then you have even the subcultures of those dialects, um, you know, and, and slang and whatnot. But even in learning mm-hmm. the basics, um, you know, you get, it's tough because, you know, and, and they do this again in any language. When you study language, you learn the formal aspect of the language. Well, then, you know, you come into not only do you have to learn that I and I mean two different things, like I is me, but I is eyeball. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, wait a minute. Yeah. You know, and there's other languages that have similarities, but uh, in their in their languages as well. But um, I won't get into the you know any further detail in that. But you know, another thing, and the reason that we're we're, we're stuck on language right now is because a lot of people don't realize, and you and I talk about this all the time, the differences in the definitions of terms. 
You know, like mm-hmm. I said, we, like we said, there was a, bo- a whole book written on just the definition of the word include. Please, yeah. <laughs> and then there's a term, there's a phrase that is uh, nasatura associus. And what that means is that uh, anything not included, or excuse me, it means that um, everything associated or the word, the word is defined by its associated words. So if I say mm-hmm. person means individual, corporation, trustee, um, uh, uh, excuse me, not trustee, trust, um, and I go on down the line with all business entities, well, what does individual mean? A lot of people think that individual means, well, human or you know, and, and it doesn't. If it meant human, it would say human. It just says yes, individual. Indeed. Well, there's an individual piece of grass. There's an individual corporation. There's an individualized corporation, such as that's called a soul. Uh, excuse me. It's called a. Um, it's called a soul corp or a soul. Uh, what is it called? Is it a soul corporation? S O L E. Yes. So. Soul proprietorship. There's also soul proprietorship. Yeah, well, there's a, something yeah. called a soul corporation as well. And it's where a singular individual can have a corporate. Because you know, with a C corp, you have to have three people. You have to have C corp, S corp. Yeah. With yeah. a C corp, you oh. have to have a, a board. You got to have the um, the president, the secretary, um, and so forth, right? So you got to have a president, secretary, mm-hmm. at, at least. And um, with uh, with the uh, limited liability company or a limited liability corporation, you actually have members. Yes. Indeed. And you can have one member or you can have several members anyway sole corporation is a different type of corporation now I suggest people look that up and I suspect that and I would make the argument in court that hey according to the um, the nature of the or the realm of uh, Nasa to our associates is that if that term individual applies to sole associate or yeah sole corporations and not human beings because if it did that's what it would say yeah, that even brings up a good point. That movie we was talking about the other day, you said you finally had watched Corporation. Oh, yeah. You know, and that kind of segue in and breaks down some of the dynamics of what was going on, how the corporation became a so called individual, well, <laughs> this person, you know. Right, and that's interesting too because with the 14th <laughs> Amendment, people don't realize that. Um, after the 14th Amendment was ratified, that was the 14th Amendment was ratified or authorized, whatever you want to call it, if it was properly okay, ratified or not. Yeah. But to supposedly help uh, former people that were formerly in bondage. You know, people like to call them slaves, but I, I, I don't like to call them slaves because not all of them had that mentality. You have to, in order to be a slave, you have your, your mentality and your spirit has to be also in bondage. That means you have to have given Indeed. up your freedom. But just because I'm in bondage, you know, and my mind is still free... I'm not a slave. I'm just someone that's in bondage or I'm a, I'm a, a prisoner mm-hmm. just held against my will. So, you know, but anyway, uh, it was put forth to protect uh, the rights of people that were, were freed at the time or the, you know, or released out of bondage. But what attorneys and corporate, what corporations did is they took attorneys and they took advantage of that and said, Hey, we're defined as a person. So that means we have the rights and we're protected by the 14th amendment. Well, as well, excuse me. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, there's only been, I believe, 19. I know there's been less than 20 cases, um, you know, from former uh, people that were formerly in bondage that, you know, took um, cases to the Supreme Court or took cases to, yeah, Supreme Court. And there were over 200 uh, corporations that used the 14th Amendment yeah, uh, used the for, 14th, their, yeah. for rights yeah. and privileges, or for their privileges. And what's interesting about that is that Again, going back to scriptures and whether or not you're an atheist or other, the, the important things about these scriptures is not necessarily the the itemized words that you see in the books. It's the message of the books. It's the message that is or that is conveyed, right? And one of the things that it says, it says, don't worship false gods. Well, people mistranslate that. They don't really realize that it's not really saying don't worship false gods. It's not merely just saying that. What it's saying is, do not recognize false or I'm sorry, don't honor false entities. entities the yeah. word God is translated. There is no word that translates to God for one. Yeah. If you look by God, creative. I mean, oh, yeah. that's, the, that's the key thing of the <laughs> yeah. English language. They oh, get yeah. real creative. They really do. And well, they get really <laughs> simplistic is, is the problem. Uh-huh. You know, creative, you can get creative by being very simplistic. 
the word Elohim they try and translate to be God. Well, Elohim mm -hmm. is a, a a plural word, a word with plural indications. Adonai is also translated to be God. So okay. it's Yahweh or the rendition of what people believe to be Yahweh or Yahuwah, uh, and so on and so forth. I mean, there's, there's very there's, uh, Baal uh, is, is translated to be Lord or and or God. El is also translated to be uh, God or or uh, no L is actually translated to be God. It hasn't been translated. I haven't found it to be translated as Lord. But anyway, the point is is that we get very simplistic, and all these different words we translate to one, and that is mm -hmm. God. So my point is, and getting to this is that 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 was mistranslated. The term actually means deity, deity. and when it says don't worship false, it means fictitious, something that does not exist, something that is untrue. Well, look at the definition of fictitious. Or false yeah. fiction, yeah. something that is not true. <laughs> you know what I mean? So let's ask this question: Does McDonald's actually exist? No. No, McDonald's does not exist. It is not. You think it's that building? I asked my son, "Does McDonald's exist?" And he says, "Well, the building's right there." I said, "Well, what if they take that building down and all, the, and they change it into something else? You know, the same building uh -huh. there, different sign." Does McDonald's? He says, "Huh." Dang. And my six-year-old said, "Son said, well, no, then it doesn't." Well, I said, well, um, so why do people say that? Does? He says, because they make hamburgers. And I said, well, again, it's about people's agreement that it exists. So we have agreed that a false entity exists. And that's exactly repugnant to what the rendition of the scripture or the message that is being conveyed by these scriptures. And again, if you're atheist or not, I don't care, Christian, Muslim, whatever, the moment you start recognizing something that's not there, you're insane because that means you're hallucinating. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And see, this is, and people may think we're being funny, but let's let's take a look at this. When they did the, uh, if you look at several other cases that went through the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court initially, or not just the Supreme Court uh, initially, the government initially looked at corporations as a group of individuals with the a similar goal, working towards a, uh, uh, attaining this, the same goal, and that's was the definition of a, of a corporation. That was legitimate. It was a group of people that have one goal that are moving to accomplish that in, in, in harmony. That's what they do. But when you change that and you say, well, no longer is the corporation the group. A corporation is an entity that has rights within itself. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> now we're starting to recognize things that actually don't, ex that don't exist. And we're giving things rights in comparison to an actual physical being, which is us, sentient beings, to something that doesn't exist. And as a matter of fact, if you do, uh, if if let's say if you acknowledge that it does exist, or you want to be the ones that say, you know what, I'm not doing that. I don't know, care what he says. McDonald's is good. They make some great hamburgers. Well, one mm -hmm. thing you're crazy <laughs> if you think they make great hamburgers. But the other thing is that it's 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 very really very simple. Is that if you look at the characteristics of a corporation. And you looked at the characteristics of people and you plot, you know, lay out on paper the characteristics and behavioral characteristics of a corporation. You'll see that they are an insane. They would be an insane um, uh, person with schizophrenia or, you know, other mental disorders. And the reason being is yeah. because they're very callous mm -hmm. about the things that they do. Mm -hmm. Right. They perform. For example, what's the bottom line goal for a corporation? The bottom line intention for a corporation is profits, mm -hmm. and that's what they care about most. Especially a public, uh, public corporation, they have to answer first to their shareholders. So the bottom line, yeah. So the bottom line is that they have to go after profits. They don't care that it it harms the uh, the ozone layer or that it harms <laughs> the environment or that it's slowly killing you. And they yeah, like Walmart. the fact, and they love the fact. If let's look at pharmaceuticals, for example. <laughs> Every every um, medicine in Western society has a side effect. Now, some of those side effects are worse than the actual symptom that they are treating. But what does yeah. that mean to the corporation? The corporation loves that. You know why? Because they not only get to um, create a medicine for the sniffles so you can stop your cold, but it's also going to give you a headache. So now they can create another headache medicine. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to create nausea. So now they get to create another nauseous medicine. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? The other one, this one's going to make you woozy. So, okay, keep you off balance. So, okay, we got to get one so that you can maintain your uh, your uh, cerebellum or your, um, yeah, your, your, right. your, your, your uh, 
your area of uh, balance and so forth. You know what I mean? So it, it, you have to look at what these what these people because that's all it is. It's people that are doing this. It's not corporations. Corporations don't exist. It's people that are doing this, and they're hiding behind a shield. And they say that money is the root of all evil. <sighs> Believe it or not, well, let's look at what's going on in the world. You have more, <laughs> you know, in, in since the these. That's the God. That's the God right there. That you know. Well, look at what it's making us do. You know, we're going over invading other countries and saying that it's in the uh, it is in the. Uh, uh, it's in the ideal of freeing them and you know Saddam murdered all these people well you know what we went over there when I say we excuse me but we sent soldiers over there to kill millions and regardless no of whether we did it with our own hands or it was done with bombs or it was done with uh, mm -hmm. a risk, you know um, you know civil strife within we allowed that you know and, and to be honest with you that is on our hands and if and I say we because we funded it when you pay an income yes, tax indeed. to the federal government and you fund the uh, the the uh, military industrial complex, you're paying for their endeavors, and so your hands are just as dirty as anybody else's. And I'm not I'm not here to point fingers and say, hey, this is the problem. You know, you guys. No, that's are real. I'm just bro. saying that's this is real. a reality that we have to look at. You know, mm -hmm. um, and there's plenty of realities we got to look at. Like I said, we in this matrix where we thinking this stuff is real. That's what's going you know, on. We know. think it's real and it's not real. You know, you know, we just uh, presuming or assuming as that right. police officer would think. <laughs> and we brought it, you know, we, we can, that's actually a perfect segue into something, that, that something that we said earlier about income tax. You know, um, mm. income tax is due. Uh, I'm not going to say that you should or shouldn't pay income tax. I'm going to say, look, there are certain taxes that are legitimate <laughs> and there are certain taxes that are not. But I'm going to tell you this. When you pay an income tax, at least from uh, your W w2 or your w4 from uh from you know working at a job or as an employee you're actually an employee uh of the entire governmental system they see you as an employee federal that, entity yeah you're you, you are even though you work for microsoft or uh any other business that was created at the secretary of state uh down at the secretary of state's office you're actually an employee of you know uh, a low-level employee of the uh the federal jurisdiction and you you fund their endeavors, period. You know, a lot of people don't want to believe that. And we say, oh, no. You look, <laughs> look, let me tell you something basic. And, and you and I know this. We, we've talked about this before. But we talk about all the time how you have the right to make a living as you please. And if you decide to go get a job, then you can do that. But if you decide not to get a job, who is anybody to tell you that you can't make a living for you to put food into your mouth? Oh, and then, who, are they to who is anybody to qualify you to say that, Okay, you know what? If you want to write papers for people or you want to uh, go cut people's yards, you got to first go down to the Secretary of State and pay this amount of money, uh, fiat money, to, uh, you know, or non money, if you want to call it, uh, and, uh, and get this paperwork first so that we can track how much you make in order for you to make this money. Otherwise, you don't have a right to do it. Come on. What kind of game is that? <laughs> yeah, I kind? mean, people think about that one. So in other words, if you decide if you decide to 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 not do what they tell you to do, you're committing a crime by not doing it. And, and you know, because I had a friend actually, the reason I bring this up, I had a friend that he was working a um, he was selling hair care products to um, you know to to folks. And if you're out there listening, please uh, to folks. And then he got um, called in, basically got a letter from the the state saying, hey, you were you in order to do that, you you need to have um, you need to be incorporated um, because you got taxes that you need to pay. Uh, and I'm not going to get into all the details on it, but who is anybody to tell him that he can't feed his family? Come on, brother. You know, who is anybody to tell him that Man, he cannot crazy, feed his man. family? But yet we fall into that all day. And then when you actually do create a business, what do you get into? Commerce. You get into commerce. Well, people are like, well, what does that mean, though? What does that mean when they get into commerce? They don't realize that a trade or business is what? Commerce, yeah. No, trader business is a public oh. office. Yes, Remember? yes. A public trader office, business. Yeah. When you get in the trader of business, and this people, most people don't realize, when you get into involved in a trader of business, you're actually in a public office. Ronald Reagan is reported as saying that all taxpayers are are uh, um, civil servants that don't have to take the civil servant exam. Yeah, you're right. Per quote from him, Ronald Reagan. And now he got his son over there being a. A journalist? What is he? A journalist oh, yeah. or something? He's on Mike Reagan. I said, boy, this is guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trip. They 
everywhere. <laughs> Indeed. Um, but you know what? That's another thing about the media. I mean, if you trust the media, <laughs> I feel for you. Oh, you got problems. <laughs> you seriously got problems. The media you is know. the great Leviathan, man. I wouldn't. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's... like this occupation, this, you know, these occupations throughout the country, what's going on. You know, these occupants or whatever you want to call them, these so called uh, protesters. You know, it's a sad thing where they're not even really. You taking somewhat an action, but who made who gave you this idea of marching, sitting out there all day long, even though you still utilizing their service? <laughs> well, and that's the key thing. You make a great point right there, is because if you want to march, first of all, or if you want to protest something, or you want something, you don't like something, um, you don't want to give energy to it. Well, when you protest, Indeed. you actually give energy to it. It's like fear. Fear is a disease that people mm-hmm. live in. Uh, that when people get it, just it, it it eats away their soul from the inside out, spirit, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, and yes. the thing is that people don't realize is that um, you know when you when you protest, you're actually bringing energy to something. You know that's why the 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 uh, the bankers or the uh, the the uh, Wall Street traders were up top drinking glass or drinking glasses of wine or champagne while they were down there. You know protesting. You know stop the Fed, stop the Fed, or whatever the case is. And it's and that's another thing is that you know we allow our movements to get hijacked. Yes, indeed. You know, yes, there's indeed. a there's a I'll saying. What is that, that saying that they have? They put out, "We will lead every revolution against us." <laughs> Come on. Come on. And we don't even realize that we're getting hijacked, and that includes this so-called sovereign movement. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I I have a question. You know, I'm not gonna. In here, we're not gonna call anybody out. Just you know, because we want to be. I'm not saying that I want to discuss and I'm not saying that I'm afraid of anybody because I'm not. I don't live in fear at all. If you want to step to me, you know, and when I say this, everyone's going to know who it is. But if you're selling a, a, a process, let's say you're selling a promissory note <laughs> for a, a process to make a promissory note and you're selling it for, you know, 500 600 $700. But this process is supposed to be able to, in using this process, you're supposed to be create any unlimited amounts of funds. Why would I Indeed. charge you seven hundred, eight hundred dollars to do it? Come on. I mean, if I know how to do it, and if it's true, indeed, that means I have all the bank, 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 all the banking funds that I need, or the funds I need in my bank account. Yes. I mean, I'm creating a billion dollar uh, promissory note right there, and I'm okay. Put this in the bank. I can. I and I'm giving bank. this to you for free. This yeah, information. Why to wouldn't you I do free. that? You know yeah. what I mean? Or charge a dollar. Okay, you know what? I want to make sure that at least you go work for it, uh, you know, because I don't want to waste my I, Whatever, whatever reason. I can't really figure out a reason <laughs> that if you get a billion dollars in your bank account where you can, you got to charge somebody seven, eight hundred dollars And I can't believe that people would even be, and you know what, though? You can't fault him. What you have to do is look at the people that are actually buying it. Yeah, yeah buying like, it too. Are you serious? <laughs> I mean, it's the same issue with the the – we won't go there, but you know what I'm talking about as far as on the issue about the housing issue. I mean, foreclosures. Well, whatnot, let's, let's, go, there. let's they, go there. Let's yeah. go there. Let's go, because we're talking about autonomy here, right? Yes, We're talking indeed. about, you know, uh, ones who do, who were sovereign. And, I, and I'll put it this way. I'll, let me just say it plainly. Is that every bank that has been issued a promissory note and securitized that promissory note and has a server send you letters or any type of statement saying that you owe a mortgage whatsoever a de- or, or that you defaulted or anything is committing a criminal act. Period. Period. There's no question about it. If Let's let's put it in simplistic forms. Okay, simplistic forms. And I'm going to use... To some of you, this won't apply, but if you live in a non-judicial state, and a non-judicial state means they're dealing with a deed of trust, right? Which means they can okay. just take you to, they can they can foreclose on you without taking you to court, but they do have to take you to court to get you kicked out because they convert you to a tenant as opposed to an owner. Sure. All right? Sure. So they take this deed of trust, and they put the promissory note inside the deed of trust, or they attach it to the deed of trust. So now let's let's look at something tangible, and let's picture a deed of trust as a bucket. And so that's a trust. A trust is a bucket that holds something, and there's a trustee of the of that of that bucket or that trust, and it's supposed to do whatever the 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 terms of that indenture are. But it can only do it if the property that is affecting the beneficiary is attached, whether it's money, uh, whether it's the property or or the such the the, the, the deed of trust. Excuse me, I'm sorry, the promissory note, right? Mm-hmm. So now let's imagine another bucket over here. 
and we take that promissory note out of that bucket or out of that deed of trust and we put it into another one and we call it an uh, asset back pool trust and what an asset back pool trust is when a bank takes a group of promissory notes and they say okay well we got five we got to get five more and they put five more in it and they, once they reach a certain level they say okay we're going to sell this trust uh, this trust pool right here or this pool of promissory notes this group of promissory notes as a trust on Wall Street what they do is they decide to get a bunch of investors to put funds into it so let's say there's 10 promissory yeah. notes that add up to 10 million dollars okay? okay so one investor gives out a million another investor gives out 500,000 so on and so forth until they reach 10 million dollars okay. the bank that put the promissory note in gets the gets that 10 million dollars because that's what they bought into now of course uh, you know we're not going to get into all the detail fees of uh, commodity tr or the traders you know, we're not going to get into all that but let's say let's just keep it simplistic the bank has received the bank has now received compensation for that promissory note Indeed. already so now let me ask you a question and let's <laughs> let's keep let's put a pin in that and keep it right there let's say I owe uh, let's say I owe Comcast, the cable company, let's say I owe them $500. And someone else decides to be really, really nice, and they would decide, you know, for whatever reason, and they go give Comcast $500. Can Comcast now come after me and say, hey, you owe me $500? No. No, because someone has already paid it, voluntarily paid it, paid it and attributed to that account. No. So in order for Comcast to come after me they would be unduly enriching themselves in other words they begin paid twice off of one transaction and that's what's going down is that's that literally legal? what's going down is that legal and did you disclose I mean did they disclose to you that they were going to do that nope. no that's a TILA violation full disclosure baby <laughs> uh, what is it what is it uh is it title 28 or is it title 18 I think it's 28 13 41 right is that mail fraud it's, yeah, it's Title 18. Title 18, that. United States Code um, 1341. Forgive me, I get titles and stuff mixed up. I read so much, so many. Yeah, but I mean, at least the, the whole point, we know Title 18 is criminal code. <laughs> right, right. Well, there are also other ones, I mean, but anyway, you're right. You're right, because that's the judicial judiciary form of the criminal exactly. code, right. And so 1341 is mail fraud. Well, if I mm -hmm. send you, if, let's say you bought a car, right? Let's say you got a old school, let's say you got a, a, a El, 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 El Camino. You know, okay. or El Dorado. Mm -hmm. Let's say you got an L dog. You know, I like L dogs, <laughs> right? And let's say it's a you know ninety five L you know El Dorado, and you've paid it off for five years, and then I send you something in the mail saying, "Look, man, you owe me five thousand dollars because I bought this blah blah blah. You bought your note, and you said, well, wait a minute, man, I paid this off a while ago." Um, and they're trying to get you to you know they're consistently trying to get you to make a payment. And let's say I do send the payment. You know, I'll say, okay, man, I don't want you guys to come get my car. But then I find out, hey, wait, I find my records and say, wait a minute, I paid this off. I sent you $5,000. You owe me that money back. No doubt. If I take that to court and I show, hey, I've already paid this off, or this was already paid off by this process right here, you know, such and such date, they just sold this. Uh, I can sue them and get that money back. Now, can I also go to the police and file a criminal complaint against them for mail fraud? Because they sent something yeah. into the mail through the mail to me saying that I owed something that they knew I did not owe them. Come on. Yeah, I can I can contact the police Come for on. that. Can tear them up. Yeah. Hey, With the banks, you want to contact the FBI because, excuse me, their national associations, um, uh, they're, they're members of the national association, which means, uh, and they were provided their um, properties, or excuse me, their authority uh, by Congress, which means they also instrumentalities of Congress so now you can you can deal with them in state court as well but you know you do want to recognize what a bank is they are instrumentalities of Congress period the way the reason that they power was given to by us to uh, by the people to the government to be able to deal with money to be able to, to okay. um, um, produce or make money okay. right well they granted that power over to someone else the Federal Reserve now that's mm -hmm. that's gonna hurt us in the long run. The reason being is because it's an oh, idiotic <laughs> it's an idiotic system. It really is, and that's what people are upset about. Uh, and if not, that's what people should be upset about. That's what Wall Street, the Occupy so-called Occupy Wall Street. I don't like that title, but uh, so-called Occupy hey, Wall Street. They phrase it, and they phrase that too. I mean, the government had something. Well, they, I mean, they 
we know. Well, no. If you look at though, if you look at um, the the speeches that are coming, or the you know the words that are coming from the people that are so called the occupiers of Wall Street, uh, when they're not dealing with the police brutality aspect of it and trying to maintain their uh, <laughs> maintain their presence there. Peace. You know, they're what they're saying is like, look, in the Fed, let's get rid of this Fed-based system and put the uh, power back in, uh, back give the power back to government in the hands of government to create and deal with money, re- deal, uh, create and regulate money. Which is, to be honest, I don't know why any nation wouldn't do that. What, what, I got you. what type of, what type of idiocy is it that a nation is sovereign, has its own power, has its own basically absolute power within the borders of its, of its domain, but yes, wants to hand off one of the most powerful. Uh, tools Weapons. that yeah. exist by the creation of money. <laughs> and you're going to give it over to somebody else. That's one of the most powerful tools you can have in order to maintain your freedom. Yeah, your you know, they don't freedom. see. That's the whole point of being disconnected. We're disconnected as a people, right? You know what yeah, I'm saying? I mean, right. we. That's the first lesson: know thyself. Indeed. We don't. We. You know. We knowing Kardashian. We're knowing uh, <laughs> all these basketball team yeah. players, and we can tell you everything about them too. Yeah. That's the crazy thing. But then you ask them about themselves, and they don't even know what their weakness is. They don't even know what their strengths are. And that's, that's sad. the crazy thing. And that's sad you know? because these government entities and. You know, I'm not a conspiracist. This is reality. And you can actually find them. If you go to their sites, they'll tell you. They'll show you uh, the various government sites. You know, they have, um, they get together with committees to determine who they're dealing with. You know, with this sovereign citizen movement, if you think you're moving in anonymity uh, with them, you're a fool. They are keeping profiles on who uh, who claims to be this, who claims to be that, and how to deal with them. You know, they they did this with the, uh, the, the flag, the people that had an issue with the fringes on the flag. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and that's that's interesting. I actually did read uh, in Title One, you you uh, United States Code about how the flag is supposed to look, but it doesn't say anything about fringes at all in there. Uh, at least I couldn't find it. If somebody can point it out to me, and there was an attorney who who's teaching uh, individuals classes who also ascribe to that um, to that 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 uh, speaking on that yeah speaking on you know fringes and whatnot yeah. that aspect of it but I still couldn't find and he did you know he pointed out something in the you know United States Code and I looked at it and I still didn't see anything about fringes um, sure, so I'm sure. like okay well I'm yeah, not going to yeah. concern myself it's, with that a, lot it's a, a lot of manufacturing there's a lot of misinformation there's a lot of disinformation and misinformation and misinformation yes. is a mistake you know somebody passing along something that is just what that they they're regurgitating something that was incorrect and they're passing it along to somebody else that's misinformation it's a mistake they didn't intentionally deceive you but somebody deceived, deceived them they believed it and they're passing it along to you now disinformation disinformation is deceit they're intentionally deceiving you they're set out there to uh, to misguide you and that's where the divide and conquer or we shall lead every revolution against us um, this is why they control the media uh, and if you don't think they control the media, all you have to do is look at the um, look at uh, I forget the name of the court case, the title of the court case, where Fox sued two of its own employees. Uh, yeah. It fired them. Oh, actually, Fox. I'm sorry, I didn't Fox. Them. It didn't. Fox. It, didn't it didn't. It didn't sue them. What they did is they fired two employees, right. and those employees uh, sued them for wrongful termination. But in that mm-hmm. court case, the uh, the court said that uh, well, Fox. Fox's lawyer said that, look, we don't have to uh, report what you think is the news. We can make what we think is the news. And there was actually several managers from uh, from uh, from Fox that actually had regurgitated that that first. So that's where he got it from. It's not like he was making it up. So I'm not going to blame it on that attorney. But he went and made those arguments, and they ended up winning. That, and in other words, what it's saying is that Fox can determine its own news that it wants to report, whether it's true or not. In other words, they have they can legally lie to you, and they do. Good they job. do. They Good lie job. to you. And if you don't believe that, I don't. You know, I got a bridge to sell you. <laughs> I really do. I got a bridge right down the street. <laughs> I want to sell it to you. You know what I mean? Um, so and, you know, so I let me. You know, I, I psh, make life easy. But um, uh. You know the 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 main thing, like we said, you know, I think, um, you know, people don't recognize, and I think it's another mistake that people do is then when they rely upon the Constitution. You know, I don't that's rely. A big, that's a big one. That's yeah, a big it's, one, it's and it's a tough one too. Now, the one thing that you do have to realize is that the Constitution, first of all, doesn't give us any rights. We know that. 
it doesn't no, give us no. anything. So you're telling me I didn't have rights before 1776 or no one had rights before 1776? <laughs> yeah, and the, come on. The Constitution was done after that, but you get my point. Um, for you for you historians, we know that the Constitution wasn't signed in 1776. Okay, so we'll get past that. But the point is, is that the Constitution doesn't give you rights. It tells the government that they have to recognize those rights. That's what it tells them. And we had to do that because it's government that we pool our money to, so they're very, they become a very powerful entity with a large amount of people, individuals sending money. You know, ten dollars here, ten dollars there, sure, by three hundred sixty sure. something million people. Even though a lot of mm-hmm. those are babies and whatnot, but you know, let's say a hundred, two hundred thousand adults, or hundred fifty thousand adults, hundred fifty million, excuse me, adults. If one hundred fifty million adults send, you know, ten dollars. Uh, then you amass quite a bit of money, you know, just from each individual sending you a small amount. Now we know we pay much more than that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh, they become a very powerful entity, which means there is the uh, potential for um, for a power grab. Well, the Constitution is there put in place so that they will not be able to grab power yeah. beyond the already provided uh, but means to do so. You know, and it's not really that they can grab power, but they can. They are put forth in order to protect our rights, and part of our rights is life. So if somebody attacks us, then hey, we got to respond back because we want to live. Exactly. Right? We want to protect our lives and our property. So hey, we get we get together as a people, and we had the perfect system for war previously, and that was that if you supported the war, you bought bonds. If you did not support the war. (laughs) <laughs> you don't buy the bonds. That means the people don't want to go to war. Leave us alone. Yeah. But now they don't do that anymore. Now the president declares that they want to do something, and the Congress says, "Okay, we approve it." But see, the thing about people don't recognize is that those are still illegal. The reason yes. that they're still illegal is because they're still committing acts of war. They're going in destroying people. They're going in destroying Damn. towns. Now, technically, they're only supposed to be going into the capitals. But we know that they're going in more than the capitals with the current yeah, um, way of their. Yeah, and they're killing innocent people, literally. Oh my goodness. Children and kids, it, mothers. There was, yeah, there was I a mean, report on the news sad. this morning where there's actually war crimes are um, uh, war crimes that have been committed. And there, there's a few soldiers on trial now. I think it's a staff sergeant that's on. He's the main focus. He wasn't the only one, but what he was doing, he was going in killing civilians, and then after they were dead, he would stage it. So that they look like they were fighting back, doing and something, then, yeah, 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 and and now so wow. some of his oh. and so he got other people within his uh, platoon to side with him to back him up. Well, now they're telling on him because they've been caught. And, uh, snitching? Oh yeah, well you know, hey, snitching ain't always wrong. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. You know, if somebody's going up on, if you got an HK or an H10 or an M16 or whatever it is that they're carrying these days, or M60 or versions of them, I know they got the new weapons now from since when I was there. But and you're <laughs> killing unarmed civilians, then I want a snitch because that means justice is going to be served because they need to be yeah. tried. I don't care what side you're on. You do some shit like that, you need to be tried. And you know what? Forget wasting taxpayers' monies and holding them up. Let's put them to death because they don't deserve. I mean, you know what? I'm not here to tell somebody that they deserve to live or deserve to die. But if you take other people's lives unjustly, okay, you need to reset. Start over. There's no reason for us to sit here and hold you. Then you got the nerve to kill Troy Davis and all these other cats. Yeah, now, and and, and see, that's the other side. That is the flip side (laughs) of that coin. There's always a flip side. And so you're right Uh in bringing that up because. But it's not, you know, it's not just Troy Davis. If you go back and you look at history, the youngest person yeah. ever to be put to death um, by the United States, and I think it was done in Texas, uh, the youngest person to be put to death in the United States was a 14-year-old boy, and they found out afterwards that he did not commit the crime that they said he did. Let's go, cool, man. As a matter of fact, he was trying to help them with the crime. And what he did, he was a young, uh, unfortunately, he was a young, a 14-year-old black boy uh, so-called black boy because you know there's no such person as black but you know hey that's a status thing but anyway the young black so boy tall. and this was happening in the 1940s you can look it up I don't remember his name but I know he was put to death that I believe in 1944 uh, but he was uh, they were what, these two white girls came up missing and the, the he was in the party to help search for them well he had mentioned to someone that he had seen them earlier in that day and so they took that as that he was the last one to see him and he had to have done something to him they took that boy and they murdered him 
Now, they took him to trial, supposedly took him through trial. Now, of course, all of his uh, so-called peers, the jury, were uh, were Europeans. White. Uh, yeah. And, he, yeah, well, you know, and I don't want to get into the thing where I'm blaming all white folks. So, that's, But 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 there is a no, climate there is a climate that is created, an atmosphere, a climate that is created here. So let's not also uh, uh, relieve them of their responsibilities as well. But I don't want to put the whole thing because a lot of it is on us. Yes, but we'll, we'll get that. We'll get to that. Um, but they took this boy and they had to put him on top of books just so that he could get the uh, electrodes uh, put on him, on his head and, and so forth, wow. and electrocuted this boy. And they come to find out that they were wrong. Mm-hmm. Now, if that's not something amazing for you, I, I don't have a problem with the death penalty when it's applied justly. But when it's applied to people that don't that, that have not done anything whatsoever to be put there, I, I have a problem with that. I have yeah, a serious is, problem with that. That's because, a big issue. That's yeah, it's a mur- it's murder. It's sing- you can't you can't yeah. change it from being murdered just because the court, the government a group of people does it because there is no such thing as government. It's a group of people. Yeah, people, individuals. Yeah. So just because a group of so people cut. get together and pull this trigger doesn't mean it's not murder. Mm-hmm. And now that the blood on his hands comes down to everyone, not just the one who pulled the uh, switch, but everyone who supported them mm-hmm. and paid mm-hmm. them even continued on afterwards. Because then it's you're supporting a, a murderer. Game, man. No. So yeah, it, you're answer. right. But the thing is, you know, we're not here to complain. We're here to say, you know, hey, there are solutions, and the solution is for you to study. Yes. It really is. Yeah. You know, we talked about it's your knowledge. I mean, you got. I mean, it's right here. That's the crazy thing, as far as information. The information is there. Yeah. You know, I mean, when you're talking like the the Library of Alexandria, as this guy mm-hmm. would refer mm-hmm. to. I mean, it's right here in the palms of our hands, you know. But don't take me wrong. You got to take some and you got to leave some. Yeah, you indeed, know? you do. And that you have to be able to decipher which is real, what's real and what's not. And, mm-hmm, and that mm-hmm. requires uh, some discipline, some mental and spiritual discipline. And get out that TV. Well, and get that's true. That, that is, you know what? And see, here's the thing with that is that, you know, I, I watch football on Sundays. You know, I got a couple teams that I follow. But you know what? That's on a Sunday, you know. And, but I have, I have a, or, you know, at certain times. And I have certain times that I'm sitting there reading and I'm studying. I have certain times that I'm teaching my children. There's a time for everything. If you want to be amused, mm-hmm. then fine. But learn what amusement is. And when you put amusement mm-hmm. into 70 or 80 or even 90% of your time, uh, make that 90% of your time, then you have to, again, realize that that's the effect. That's the resonance that you're going to create within yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't comprehend when we talk about resonance and things of that nature, but that has a lot, has everything to do with sovereignty and, uh, and autonomy. We'll get into that in a second. But so yeah, what I'm we, saying is... Obviously, um, some of these conversations are going to get more into some of the details yeah, right, 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 views right, of right, what right, you look at, especially when you're talking getting off the grid and yeah, yeah, some yeah, elements absolutely. on that level and getting back to a peaceful you know, getting your peace of mind back. Oh, yeah. And see, that's the, you're absolutely right. The first thing first is that if you want to be free, it starts in your mind. There's no marching for mm-hmm. freedom. You know, just because Never. somebody puts me in jail doesn't mean that I'm not free. I'm free mm-hmm. when I accept being there and say, okay, this is where my place is. This is where I deserve. That's when Indeed. I become a slave. That's when I become a servant. But otherwise, I'm just a, a prisoner. You can call me a prisoner of war, a political prisoner, uh, a racial uh, gender prisoner, racial prison, gender or, or prisoner, whatever you want to call yourself. You're a prisoner if you're put in jail or your freedom is taken away, but your mentality or your spirit to be free is there. One thing that I know, the reason why I am, I know why I am the way I am right now. I know why I am here in this movement of or, you know, sure. discussion, discussing with you uh, in, in, in the hopes of influencing people to recognize their own autonomy which is synonymous with liberty is that look you were born with free will you decided to give it up or not give it up you know even with your parents you know that dis- that influenced your behavior by discipline or reward you decided to do a certain thing a certain way you may have decided mm-hmm. well I don't want to be on time out so I'm going to do this or I didn't want a whooping so I'm going to do this uh, or I'm not going to let them catch me or you know I want some ice cream so I'm going to do this clean my room up and blah they only influenced your behavior, but you decided to make the move and whatever it is that you did, right? And that's mm-hmm. what true freedom is. And I've always had, man, I've always, and even growing up, I grew up in the South, and we were always at church, you know, uh, until we, we moved. And then even when I moved uh, up North, uh, I had a, I got a girlfriend, and we always, you know, went to church. 
Uh, but I was always questioning what the preacher was saying. 24 7. I was yeah. always questioning, you know, if that's the case, then, well, you know what, you want me to worship the son? How come I can't worship just the father? Wasn't the son a man? And, and you know, and uh, some people are going to look at that like, oh, you're, you're making, you're young, you didn't know any better, blah, blah, blah. Look. Yeah, whatever. Ask questions. The moment you stop asking questions and you just start accepting somebody else's rendition of what truth is, the moment that you become a zombie. And that's you're, right there. Yep. How, that's beautiful and and we're talking how many people how many of us are literally zombies anyway just go with the flow yeah. brother don't even ask no question just sure where do I go sign up yeah 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 I mean literally. they told us we needed driver's licenses so we went and did it they give us a parking <laughs> ticket so we go and play it pay it but they don't realize yeah. that you have the right to be on that road because you created it it's yours you don't realize that you don't have to pay a parking ticket because that instrument is a violation of due process because on the instrument it says you have been deemed to be found guilty of this uh, infraction wait a minute hold on a yeah. second First of all, if you want me to come to court, you need to issue me accordance, uh, a summons and complaint in accordance with civil, uh, whatever the state or federal civil uh, procedures are. It says, mm -hmm. if you look at, you know, I don't care if you're in California, Washington, I don't care what state you're in. It says that in order to initiate a, um, a uh, civil complaint or a complaint, you have to issue a, you start out with a summons and complaint. Even with yeah. the crime, there has to be a complaint someone has to have committed a crime or and someone has to have been a, become a victim <laughs> that, that, corpus delecti <laughs> I mean there has to be a victim yeah. so wait a minute so I was charged with uh, not giving providing information to police one time and I was like well what makes you think that I have to because I asked you for it well hold on let me <laughs> ask you something where is your um, authorization your, your uh, what is it called the designation of authority which is essentially their um, their oath of office, you know. Okay. You know, the oath of office Somewhat, determines yeah. what their power is and what they're able to do. It determines who they are first, and then it, you know, the out the the uh, the oath, which is taken to the Constitution, state and federal, determines what they can do. But again, remember earlier we mentioned the enabling acts, okay. enabling acts of each state, and the enabling act tells you that look, the only form of government that they can be created is a republican form. And the Constitution yeah. cannot be repugnant to the de uh, to the principles of the Declaration of Independence, as well as the uh, United States Constitution. And I had an attorney tell me one time uh, when I was young and this, you know, getting in this, that I had uh, decided that I wanted to go after this uh, police officer for, you know, you know, basically harass me for, uh, you know, get a ticket. And I said, well, you know, you do have to have one. And I was like, well, wait a minute. What about the Declaration of Independence? We went over a lot of things. And one of the things was the Declaration. She said, well, the Declaration of Independence really is not a legal legally enforceable document I said whoa whoa, whoa time out <laughs> I said doesn't the enabling act say that the, the principles of or excuse me that the constitution and the government for uh, Washington cannot be repugnant to the de principles of the declaration of independence as well as the United States government so doesn't that make it a legally enforceable document and she says well you seem to know what you, you know more than what you uh, than what I do so why don't you go ahead and move forward with it and I'm like well wait a minute I'm consult I'm sitting here <laughs> consulting with you I'm asking you so if you don't know then fine okay that I, I recognize that I'm not here to debate with you but I'm here for you to take all of this in the in, in accord so that you can t so that you can inform me or either confirm with me how I should move forward no doubt, and, she, no and again, doubt. I was young and didn't know any better. I didn't know anything about corpus juris secundum at the time, about any time you hire an attorney that you're a ward of the state or an infant, mm -hmm, infant mm -hmm. or incompetent and blah, blah, blah. I'll never do that again. Uh, and FYI, people, uh, look up the word counselor. It is not synonymous with attorney. Attorney no is doubt. only one mm -hmm. type of counselor. It is not the only form of counselor so you are not required to have an attorney you are required I shouldn't say you are required you are you have the right to uh, have someone with you that is learned in law mm -hmm. as a counselor mm -hmm. and they don't even have to be learned in law if you want them if you just want them to sit there uh, uh, yeah, for you for uh, support, support then they can do that that's your counsel the constitution mm -hmm. doesn't define counselor and it doesn't define and even the Bovier the books that define the terms of the constitution do not define it as an attorney which mm -hmm. means a, a, mm -hmm. a, a, a bar a, a, a member of the bar which <laughs> excuse me for getting loud but which is uh, a contradiction in the terms of the constitution as well because let's think about this when someone passes the bar, which is, means they take a test that was put forth by the, the bar association, by whatever state that you're in, 
Um, and then they sign, uh, they enter, they, they become a member of that bar association. What they are, they become a judicial officer. Most people don't recognize that all state bar associations, all of them, look them up, are administrative arms of the Supreme Court of that state. So, for example, here in Washington, the Washington Bar Association is the administrative arm, isn't it? Excuse me, an administrative arm of the Supreme Court of Washington. So, when an attorney signs up under the the, the uh, under that organization, they become a judicial officer. This is recognized. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But what you don't recognize is the violation of the separation of powers when they take on an executive role. So, for example, what office or what branch does the district attorney sit in? What what branch of the attorney? Yeah. What, well, no, 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 no. The district attorney sits under the executive. He's underneath okay. the mayor. He works with the police, which is the executive. But he's okay. a member of the court, which is a judicial officer. Judicial officer. Oh yeah. yeah. That's a violation of the um, of the principles of the uh, constitution that, that discuss or that uh, roles, the yeah, balance. Yeah. Yeah. The the uh, balance. Or excuse me. The uh, Separation of powers. Checks and balances. Checks yeah, and balances. Exactly. And balance. Checks and balances. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Is what it's called. And so we have to yeah. look at little things like that and recognize there's a lot of things that they're. See, again, it's that we talked about this before. We always talk about that frog, you know, the frog boiling frog, right? Mm-hmm. If you attempt mm-hmm. to throw a frog in a pot of boiling water, what's he going to do? He's going to hop out. I ain't getting in there. That's hot. Hey. But if you put him in some cold water or some, you know, cool water that's comfortable to him, he'll sit there and chill. And then you turn that flame Mm -hmm. on high, (laughs) he'll sit there and boil to death. (laughs) He'll sit, and that's what's going on. And that's how most of us are thinking, exactly what we're doing. And you remember, we talked before about in 1933, what what happened with Roosevelt. Oh, they did. Where he he ordered people to give up their gold, right? Give up their gold, period. Well, let me ask you this. what, what, What branch is he in? He's the executive branch because he was executive, the president, yeah. right? Well, can the president tell executive the people, order. the sovereign, if you want to be sovereign now, remember the sovereign is the highest lawmaker. And That's at the time, they actually were, you know, there were distinctions. You could tell you knew who the sovereign was. There's, it's not sure, like now, like sure. the lines are blurred and the sovereigns are, you know, kind of incognito. Uh, then the sovereigns were, you know, the European male. That was it. And as soon as he put out this order, this executive order, saying that people couldn't, uh, persons had to hand in, and it said persons, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. had to hand in their gold, couldn't hoard their gold, all these people came flocking, and that was a test, and people didn't even recognize it, and there's some they people out there know. to this day that say that that was a legitimate, you know, order or law that you have to follow, you had to follow that, or you exactly. could oh, book, yeah, right? matter of fact, I heard, one, matter of fact, I heard, uh, he was claiming it was a law, um, Michael Reynolds from um, Earthship about the land, one of the land executives, I mean, one of these laws they came out with, and it was like an executive order, <laughs> and he was claiming that was law. I was like, man, we are lost, yeah. you know. Yeah, indeed. We are lost as a people because we don't really dig into nothing. We just take it as surface, you know, right. and and that brings us to that same issue when the 33 with George Orwell, and I always use this example, when George Orwell did that um that broadcast about the aliens. <laughs> yeah, the world you know? of worlds. And he yeah, yeah. And he literally manipulated the people to flip out. People oh, yeah. was really going cuckoo. You yeah. know, and that was the time really where they really seen what we can do. And then you had during that period of time as well as the Wizard of Oz, all these certain things was going on in the thirties, people don't really connect. Right. You know, I mean you had you know, when you really talk in the 30s, the 30s was straight hella yeah, <laughs> issues, yeah. a lot well, of issues, the Social Security Administration yeah, Act, and, yep. you know, all again, kinds of stuff was invented. You know, people talk about the, uh, people talk about the, uh, you know, the bankruptcy and, um, you know, some people say, well, the bankruptcy wasn't true or some people say it is true. You know what? I don't care whether it was or not. I know that even if that wasn't true, it is going to be true eventually because you cannot have a debt-based system where the only time that money comes into creation is through debt and expect all of that debt to be paid back. It is an impossible contract. It is an impossible contract to have a debt-based system. You mean to tell me in order to put any dollar into circulation that I have to pay five cents on that dollar? Well, where am I supposed to get the five cents if you're the only one that's authorized to create the money? 
So you got to create on, the money on. for the interest in order for me to pay that interest, which is going to create more interest. Wait a minute. That don't sound right. We going in circles. <laughs> Ain't this the same place we've been sense. before? You know, and we're not paying attention to that stuff. Uh, yeah, and, then, know, and then we want to give it, and that's the problem because we give them the power. We right. literally give the people, the so-called government the power to do what everything. I mean, because look what we do. We ask them for, um, what should I feed my child? Similac? What should I yeah. feed? You know, you know what, and, and, <laughs> and nature already told you. Feed that boy the first milk. We don't grab onto that nibble. You know, don't be scared. Uh, it's going to be all right. That's nature. That's what it's for. We don't, you got to think about it, though. We're the only animal that does it that does that <laughs> and on. we're also the only animal that on a regular basis drinks another animal's bodily fluids exactly milk and got milk, a nerve milk. and got a nerve to be asked, wondering why the man so, why we got all this obesity you know why we got all these other issues that's dealing yeah, with you yeah. know even our animals are reflecting of our views huh mm -hmm. yeah it's funny <laughs> I was at the park the other day uh with my little dog and uh Man, I saw these big old. I mean, it was uh, one was a Saint the Saint Bernard, and I think the other one was an Akita. But they were so okay. big, man. They looked like cub, bear cubs. I mean, it was big, they were dealing. You know, they were with. They were walking with the elderly couple. Um, so you know, I assume that they don't. They don't get out and exercise much, just because I could. You know, you can tell when somebody exercises. Yeah, yeah, they you didn't. definitely they can tell. Yeah. And uh, so, the, obviously, the dogs didn't either, <laughs> um, because them <laughs> dogs was fat, bro. They were fat. And um, and it's unfortunate because we're not only are we getting that way, but obviously the animals that rely upon us are now becoming, you know, are having that same issue because you're starting to see more cancerous types of uh, issues with animals and and that nature yeah, as, as well as us. And we don't realize that um, we don't realize that uh, you know we're being attacked. And, and I have to say this. Uh, we're being attacked in every form of fashion. We're being attacked Come spiritually. Um, unless, you know, you want to discuss that real quick, I'll tell you how. You have now churches that cannot become churches unless they file out a, a paperwork properly and become a 503C uh, organization. Mm -hmm. And anytime you, well, people say, well, what's wrong with that? Well, <laughs> here's the thing is that <laughs> if you do not preach or teach within the, well, no, I said it right. If you don't preach, yeah. uh, within their certain uh, under their guidelines and you go beyond their guidelines they they will threaten to take that away from you take your 503c away. well you're not a church you're not acting as a church so um, you get you got you over here teaching mathematics and science so you acting more like a school so we're gonna take your 53c away instead of well wait a minute hold on <laughs> um, mathematics and science is all a part of and that's the problem is mathematics and science sure. is a part of uh, our, every aspect of our way of life including religion as we like to call it even though I don't like to call it that but we like to separate mm -hmm. and compartmentalize things as you say it. and uh, mm -hmm. that's another that's a reason for that there's a reason for that um, if you get every time you get married first of all in order to get a to get a license for anything is saying that you are doing something that was once at one time illegal or a crime mm -hmm. and you're getting permission in order to do it so when was getting married ever a crime ever Man, come on, brother. You know what I mean? Uh, if you don't believe me, ask your preacher what he says. You know, go to somebody's wedding. Just just go. You see a wedding going on, go and listen to the to the vows or the, to the vow that mm -hmm. the, uh, or the oath that the... Uh, you can watch it on TV. All these celebrities yeah, the, get married the preacher, in five days. Yeah, the preacher says. He says, by the power invested in me and by the state of whatever. Well, wait a minute. I don't want a preacher that has a, the power invested in him by the state or something to, to get me together because if I want to be married, if I'm going to be married and it comes from a, yeah, I don't care whether you're an atheist or not, marriage comes from a religious institution. Now, partnership yes. doesn't, but a marriage comes from a, a religious institution or at least the aspect of a spiritual institution, I should say, mm -hmm. uh, a spiritual mm -hmm. aspect of things. And, um, and it's a uniting of two people under vows because who in their right mind would take a vow to someone that they've only known for a year or six months or a day or however much yeah, time for right. the rest. How, why would you take a vow to them for the rest of your life? You have no idea who you're going to be in 10 years. You don't know how you're going to be in okay. a year. And then what if you guys grow apart, but yet you've taken a vow that I'm going to be with you the rest of my life through thick and thin. Well, that's not how they used to do it back in the day. And people say, well, yes, they did, but no, no, no. I'm telling you, in studying history, do your and homework. Just merely, yes, merely look at, I can point you to one civilization, but I'll point you to several. 
you can go to Rome. You can go to uh, Rome wasn't the one I was going to point out. You can also go to Greece. That was the one I wasn't going to point. But I was going to point out the Kemet or what people call Egypt. Um, mm -hmm. There's documented history that Egyptians or Kemetic peoples used to do one and five year agreements and then decide if they wanted to continue on from there. And if they wanted to continue on from there, then they would decide to have children. And if they had children previously, then they would determine how they were going to deal with those children, and they maintained according to those records. Now, people like to say that Greece was the first one that came up with the uh, modern form of of, uh, of of our legal system. That's not true. And if you, if, if you yes, by, and the reason that I say that is because in Kemet or Egypt, as people like to call it these days, but anyway, in Kemet, they used to have what is called um, public um, uh, public. Uh, 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 public hearings, public uh, court hearings. Yeah, and though are. it wasn't necessarily by a jury in all cases or of the people, so that it was still by a judge who had to open it up so that people could make sure that he was being fair. And if he was not being fair, then the people would not acknowledge his um, his judgment as true and and, uh, okay. and formed. It would be void because, you know, they would accept it or, or not accept it. And if it was, if they basically were in that same situation and they were like, oh, you know, that's not fair. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't like that done to me or my family. Then they wouldn't do it to mm -hmm. someone else. And that judge's mm -hmm. order was void. That's the first, at least recorded, um, that I know, uh, the first Damn, recorded form yeah. of public, uh, public or jury type of, um, uh, type of, uh, hearings. You know what I mean? Now they right. also happen in Sumer, but, um, some of that is kind of, uh, it's kind of it's not really clear in certain aspects on how they did certain things with me i do i've read a lot of their um you know societal cultural as far as spiritual is concerned but not as far as their legal system so i haven't been until here so i'll admit okay. that but anyway that's all i understand but you, what you was already that, referencing right what was that code you know, what was the specific code that talked about trade and business do you remember that was it 26 or 28 usc 77 i think it was uh uh was it 26? I think it was 26 USC. Was 26, 77, 01, yeah. something. Just read. It's an A or B. It was one of them. But anyway, it talks about and it defines what a trader business is. And it says that it's an operation of a public office. Hold mm -hmm. on. So let's recognize this. <laughs> trader business. Let's say you got a small business. And I have one called Royalty Properties, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And it was when I was in real estate. So according to this, according to 26 U.S.C. 7701, I was operating in a public office. Wait a minute. I wasn't elected. I was never trying to run for government. I was never trying to work for government. Okay. But you're telling me that I'm a part of a public office? Hold on a minute. I didn't want to be part of a public mm -hmm. office. So somebody tricked me because I didn't know any better. I allowed myself to be tricked because I didn't know any better. But when you know better, you got to do better. And each one should teach one. So I'm out here sharing this with, uh, you know, with everybody. Um that's how we do it. You know, I we mean, go. we've been doing it for a while here in my sovereign world. You know, and you know? Uh, I appreciate and, it. Uh, and that's the whole, and that's the whole key thing of growth. I mean, we all gotta grow. That's why we feed, got to. give you what you, you know, give you what you need. Yeah. <laughs> no, and, and I'll tell you, in interpreting these laws, man, people have to, they have to look at things. I know, for example, one thing. I know there's this site. It used to be out there, and uh, his name was Cody. If anybody knows him, he used to run. Um, and he was real good. I used to like the way he, his perspective of things, but he used to, uh, have a site called the natural person, I think is what it was. And, um, he was open-minded. He, when I mean, he would leave his mind unlocked to different perspectives, but he had an idea of certain things. And he used to believe that, um, the natural person meant the man and woman. And that's not necessarily true. Let's look at the word natural. The word natural yeah. just means, all it means is that used for what it was built for or used for what it was created for. So, for example, mm -hmm. <laughs> if I want something that eats wood, I'm going to go get a carpenter ant. That's a natural mm -hmm. person, right? Or something, a natural wood eater or something to that effect. It's, it's natural because it is what it was made for. When McDonald's was created for making hamburgers, it didn't have to be the best hamburgers. It just had to be hamburgers. Oh. So if a person is considered, if a corporation is considered a person, can McDonald's be considered a natural person? Well, according to uh, uh, Black's Law Dictionary, natural, again, means something used for what it was created for. So that word, that means that McDonald's can be a natural person if we're talking about hamburgers. 
Mm-hmm. Again, we're realizing, we're recognizing, and we're, we're, we we acknowledge that Putting it in perspective, that law, perspective. right, that the legal perspective or statutes recognize fictitious entities and whatnot. So, putting it in perspective, can McDonald's or can Microsoft? You know, let's use a, a more people. I'm, everybody's familiar with, with, with uh, McDonald's, but you know, Microsoft. So, let's say we're talking about computer programming or internet or something to that nature. Well. That Microsoft in accordance with the internet or uh, uh, programming, Windows based programming is a natural mm-hmm. person under legal terms. So just because it says natural person doesn't mean that that's what they are talking about. And you just have to no be able to articulate that. Another thing that you can do um and, and this is just things to get you guys started, you know, uh, you know, people started or, you know, to further their studies and things of that nature. Um, and then I want to get into that EFT thing just real quick. Uh, about people being careful about that yeah um uh um real quick what you can, one of the things that you can do is if you look up um corporate under corporations if you look up on uh what's it uh what's it called um brad and dunn street <laughs> is yeah brad the, uh, yeah brad yeah. dunn street is a uh just like um corporation that well no what's the what's the name of the um uh, experian or um What's the transunion? Transunion. They keep people track of people's credit, yeah. credit scores, yeah. and things like that. Well, right. Brad Dunn Street keeps uh, track of corporations and their credit scores. So if you go on Brad and Dunn Street and you pull up, uh, go pull up any any name of any courthouse in America, in the United States, <laughs> pull up any courthouse on the Brad and Dunn Street, and it'll come up trading as or doing business as. Well, hold yes, on. Indeed. That's indicating that it's a corporation. So what you do is you contact the city clerk for whatever city that you're that you're dealing with, and you ask them for the charter for the city. In the charter mm-hmm. for the city, a couple of things that you'll re- it'll reveal to you. It'll reveal to you what the police actually are, because the police, for example, we have a subdivision down here called Renton, and the city of Renton, the police department for the city of Renton, is not the same thing as the sheriff. The sheriff is voted in by people or actually corporate members, but the point oh. is. is by people the police are not the police chief is not voted in he's appointed by the mayor the mayor is the head or the executive of that particular sub um sub corporation or uh, the subsidiary of the state corporation which is a subsidiary of the federal corporation and so forth but uh it's more in, in likely called or more until called a um, political subdivision but the point is is that it is a corporation and all of them have yes. charters, and all of them have tax ID numbers. Ask a police officer to see his identification. He will not show it to you. You know why he won't show it to you? Because if you flip it over and turn it over on the back, it has a tax ID number on it. Now, I'm pretty sure, soon pretty sure they're going to take those off. But do a Freedom <laughs> of Information Act request and ask for his stub or the stub of any judge. And you'll see that they get a paycheck from a corporation with a tax identification number, and that tax identification number is on that pay stub. Yeah, that's great. So don't just tell me, you know, and it it used to be that people tell me, well, you're going into a a, a bank or a bank, or excuse me, a judge is really a bankster because bench means bank, and that is true. But you can't just say that. And then have some yeah, and that's because the problem. They, they that's like, okay, we we'll prove it. Stop. You know what? We don't know yeah. what you're talking about. I'm going to play dumb here. I don't know what you're talking about. We're going to continue moving forward. Well, you know what? What's up with this tax identification number right here? I want to know who you are because I don't have no contract with you. Indeed. That's and what it. does every constitution say? By the consent of the people, blah, 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 mm-hmm. blah, 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 blah. By the consent mm-hmm. of the people, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. They'll tell you it's by your consent. Tenth you Amendment. A, I mean, yeah. look at the Tenth Amendment. It'll tell you right there. The only jurisdiction is right there in District of Columbia. Nowhere yeah, and else, and it's, no it's interesting. Oh, that's another thing. You brought up something. People be, uh, believe that they that they took away the redemption clause um, for money, for uh, dollar bills or, you, or federal, uh, federal Reserve notes. Federal Reserve. That's not true. They did take it off of the dollar so that the majority of people wouldn't know, but they always take things that help you out of plain sight and it make you go find it. Now, I no don't doubt. remember... Which uh, honestly, I, I, right now, off the top of my head, I do not recall which um, United States Code title it is under. But there's United States Code. I read it. I do have it in my notes. If you want to specifically email me or contact me about it, I can send it over to you. But there's a United States Code that says that if you, um, well, how does it? If you, uh, 
object if you object to using Federal Reserve notes you can send those Federal Reserve notes into an office in Washington DC and it gives you the address and they will redeem them for you so don't tell me that they took away the redemption or the availability to take it's, it's redemption not common knowledge yeah, exactly it's not common, common, common hidden so people don't know where it is and they, uh, it's not right. a plain sight it doesn't exist and they're exist. good at that you know they're good at that they've been doing that for a long time more well, the last hundred years yet so years now <laughs> yeah, exactly and that's another thing the reason sure. that, this is another thing that what they've done with uh, religion and science uh, by separating the two you have a lot of people now that are confused and believe that evolution is, is stood mm -hmm. on its own and oh no creation stood on its own no they're combined fools Yes, and I'm indeed, sorry to call indeed, you. I'm not indeed. sorry, but forgive me for calling you fools. But it's just out of ignorance that you believe this. It's because it's been taken out of your sight. Here's the problem: if you're an evolutionist, or you know, you don't believe in a uh, an intelligent design, let me explain. Let me ask you this question: Evolution came up. Uh, if you look at evolution, they have something that's called a missing link, and people have tried to explain this missing link and blah blah blah, so on and so forth. And that's fine. Let's say it died off, you know, whatever. It just didn't have the capability to survive. But explain to this to me. If evolution is true, and I do believe in, in a form of evolution, so don't get me twisted. If evolution is true and, and independently on its own, then why is it that it takes everything millions of years to develop, to evolve? in your DNA and mm -hmm. your skin and letting go of the tail and our hair removal and blah, 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 you know. Look at the size of the brain. The size of the brain tripled in a matter of a thousand or so years. Tripled. Actually, more than tripled. Mm -hmm. The size of the brain more than tripled in a matter of a uh, few thousand years. If evolution is true on its own, how did that happen? Can someone explain that to me? <laughs> and if you say that that didn't exist, then we shouldn't even be talking because that means you're not up on your history. And you're not up on knowledge. Yes. You need to get a get a foundation first, and let's have a conversation. Again, I don't have a problem discussing things with people that disagree with what, where we stand or where I stand, because I love conversation. I love to be proven wrong, because you know what? If I'm proven wrong, that means I'm now right. At least yes, in that perspective, indeed. I want to I want to know. I have a thirst for knowledge. You know what I mean? Indeed. I don't have a thirst to be you. for power. I don't have a thirst for power. Sometimes that comes with knowledge, because I'm powerful over myself. You know what I mean, and that's what the guy was talking it's about that contacted you. Exactly, power. You want to, you want to be sovereign first. You got to be autonomous. You have to get to sovereignty in order to be sovereign. Come in on. order to be a ruler, you have to first rule your own life. How are you going to tell somebody what to do outside of your house if your house is not Come in order on. yet? So you have to be that's autonomous it. first. You know, yeah. Yahshua, it's if you believe about that, action. Yeah, yeah. For those people that believed in Yahshua, you know, Jesus, and those that don't, then you can disregard this. But those believed in him, he had a development process to go through. People don't realize that they don't even know his history. He disappeared at the age of 12, reappeared at the age of 29, and then all of a sudden starts speaking to people and teaching people and know, you know, know. getting the disciples and so on and so forth. Well, wait a minute. What did he do between the age of 12 and 29? <laughs> But they don't want to know. They don't want to know no, where he, he got not, his knowledge no, from. I know what he was doing. Yeah, we know. You know what but he was doing? Was that? Yeah, he was he was on Xbox. He was playing <laughs> Xbox and you know uh, watching Kardashians and the family. And you know and what I'm saying? Trying to catch up. He all of a sudden got enlightened. It's like, oh yeah, you know. And, mm -hmm. But you know what? In our reality, that's it's funny, but it's sad. Because the more the population becomes dumbed down, the more we have things like Iraq, the more things like we have like Libya, the more things that we have in, um, in uh, ah, shoot, I forget the name of the, forgive me for forgetting the name of this, uh, there's this African nation now that's going through um, uh, civil war or revolution or whatever you want to call it, but nobody's talking about it. Uh, yeah, it's a whole bunch uh, of them. You know, it's a bunch of, yes, it is a lot of them. And, you know, you're talking about, okay, we're going into get Saddam we were looking for mass you know, weapons of mass destruction but even though we didn't have him uh, we still got to get rid of him because he was killing all his own people and we did the same thing with Libya he was killing all his own people well, wait a minute yeah. there's people that are cutting people's hands off, cutting children's hands off there was a picture that I saw bro of a boy who was hungry who stole a, a, uh, a apple so that he could eat it not so that he could get rich but so he could eat it and they rolled, they held this boy down and rolled a jeep over his hand yeah, in order to I mean, break his hand because it's Sharia law Sharia law, and that's what like, that's what folks want to live under. And first things that's first, I don't care what law you have. You can people can decide what type of law they want to live under. 
But that law should first be compassionate. If somebody's hungry, feed them. I know, come on. You know what I mean? That shouldn't even be no problem. It shouldn't. I, I don't have a problem, you know, with, with, with somebody being fed. If somebody, And as a matter of fact, it, again, not a Bible thumper. It's just uh, having so be that I, that was part of my history in school and uh, curriculum. Um, is that uh, one of the things that it says in there is that, look, if you're walking through a field, you have the right, or I'm giving you the right, so, so, so-called God said, I'm giving you the right to take enough to carry within your own pockets or your own self, but you cannot take a bucket, go to somebody's stuff and then, you know, somebody else's uh, farm or right. field and take, you know, enough to carry <laughs> away in the bucket. But, you know, if you're walking yeah. through, if you're a traveler, you know, take a stalk off here, take a stalk off there and, and then move it on. You know what I mean? But That's don't indeed. go rob that person. You know what I'm saying? But again, that person, if they saw you walking through, you know, hey, go ahead, take a couple, you know, going about, you know, it's just the, it's just compassion. You know what I mean? We have to get compassion first. If we don't get compassion, we're done. Yes. We're done. If and all we're of starting us to see it because there's some evil folks out oh, here. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I mean, the majority of the folks want to do good. I get that. Well, you know they what the problem with that life. is? The problem with that is, is that the evil people have a will to and determination to put their evil, wicked ways or whatever you want to call it off on other people. But the good people sit yeah. back and do nothing. So that means that makes the good people subjected and worse, it makes them compliant with what's, what the evil people are doing. So, yes. yeah, the majority of people might be good or at least have a good nature within themselves, intentions, but they're not yeah. good. You know, they might have good intentions, but they don't have good foresight because if we had sure. good foresight, we would stop giving this money to this in the military industrial complex so they can go over and yeah. subjugate people, different people in the world and expand this empire because that's all we're doing is expanding an empire. What do you think, Jay-Z? Yeah, talk what do you about think? How- what do you think Jay-Z? this country is oh yeah and it, within it's great but not the, the not the destruction that we cause and don't get me wrong i'm not an america or a u.s beater i'm just saying that hey we got to get control of this because everything that's happened yeah. across the world we are responsible for everything that we're doing to people across the world we're responsible for and the blood yeah, is reflecting the hands of the people. back on you us yeah. me you know? And I'll tell you uh, another one other thing to the to, to the supporters or the uh, occupant occupants, do first things first. If you want to end the Fed, first thing you have to do is you have to stop supporting the Fed. You have to take Indeed. your funds out of there. I tell you this: a lot of those people out there walking and talking about end the Fed. I've done more. I haven't gone out there, but I've done more than what they have because I took my money out of banks. I don't do buy things by loans anymore. If I can't afford Come to pay on, for it, you know, with the things that I have, the resources that I have, then I don't get it. You know, I got a, a car that's, you know, the cars yeah. I have are paid for, The motor, any motorcycles, anything I have is paid for. I'm not paying on any loan. Now, I'm not saying everybody should live like that. If that's the way you want to live, then so be it. But then don't complain when they go do what the hell they want to do <laughs> with the money that you gave them to, to enrich them. And the same thing with foreclosures. We're crying. They took our wealth. They took our wealth. No, they didn't. Uh-huh. They don't have the promissory note. They don't have the promissory exactly. note to demand that you pay $140,000 for a house that's only worth, two, uh, you know, uh, 75000 <laughs> They don't. They don't have the promissory note. So you got all equity in your house. You got 100% equity. You just don't know it. Yes, Lack of indeed. knowledge destroys That's it. Us. Right there. Right there. But real quick, down. real quick, um, the EFT thing, what, which is taking over. EFT, that's what You, you want to segue us into that? EFT. But, yes, I think it stands okay. for uh, electronic electric funding transition transfer. Right, transfer. Right. Well, <laughs> back in the late nineties, um, be, right before we met, I had just gotten out of banking, and one of the places that I that I did work for was um, Trans Alliance, which was the foremost. And actually, I think it was the it was it wasn't the only because um, e, EDT. Um, what's Ross Perot's? Um, his old well, uh, processing company. Anyway, well, his system. His yeah, some, his system. Yeah, his system. It was. They were the only other uh, processor out here, and they we had a partnership with them. So they were only still. They were only doing certain banks uh, processing for certain banks, whereas we did others. So I was ahead of the Mastercard department and um, and uh, Transalliance uh, Settlement Department. And so one of the things I do have is I have experience in banking, internal banking. Uh, the, the communications between banks and then I went over after that um, I went over and worked they were going through some management uh, thing issues and I didn't want to be a part of it um, so I ended up going over to one of my clients working for them so I got to know a little bit you know even a different perspective of internal banking um, over there I worked again for a settlement department but it was the I mainly oversaw the 
we went through a transition or uh, conversion from the old um, DOS system when ATMs okay. and stuff like that were using the DOS system. Like the data system. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, and then it started using the, the EPIC system or the Windows-based system. It, what, it, okay. what they did is we converted them over to Ross Perot's new system, which is the EPIC-based system, uh, system. Excuse me. And so one of the things I know is uh, a little bit about is uh, <laughs> is some things about banking. And uh, what's going on now is, uh, you know, everybody knows about the accepted for value thing that was going on. And that is where you take a bill and you convert it into a note and um, you take their remittance, which is nothing but a check, which is that is true. It is, it is nothing but a check. And you convert it into a note and you send it in to pay um, for to set off your bill or, to um, you know, discharge your debt for anything that you owe. And uh, it was working sporadically. Uh, I think what's the guy's name that was promoting that? Um, not Tim Turner. You talked to him. You were you used to. I know. I know. I know. I'm, I forget I'm his name to... anyway. Doug Little. Uh, Doug Riddle. I think. Is yeah, his name. Douglas yeah. Riddle. Yeah, yeah, Douglas Riddle. And uh, he promoted that for a while, and it and it seemed to work for him for some reason. But it was for, it worked occasionally. I got a, quite a few things, uh, you know, taken care of with it. But not everything. Some people were like, "Oh, what are you doing? You're crazy!" And I sent in all these memorandums and tried to get them to pursue even. You know, legal sure. procedures and they, the courts wouldn't enforce it. And I'm like, okay, well, it's, it's cool, but it ain't, you know, it's not, I can't focus on that. I got to focus on bringing in resources because, you know, bottom line is I still got to pass something along down to my children, wealth, knowledge, you know, so on. I mean, true wealth, not just riches off of Federal Reserve notes and blah, 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 or credits and debts. Anyway, so now people are, because that wasn't working for people, people have now gone to use what is called electronic EFTs. And what they do is they write, checks off of closed accounts you know bank accounts that have been closed and uh, people have been suggesting well you know you need to look up you know what closed accounts mean and they went to Black's Law and under Black's Law it does say that you know account that is closed or closed for credit and debit transactions but still open for adjustments and set offs well people don't recognize what the word adjustments and set off means to a bank look people I'm here to tell you what that means is that let's say you go in and close your account now, if you look at your account right now, all of people's account, what they do is they have a lot of regular um, uh, ongoing transactions that come out of their accounts. You know, you may you may have a cable bill that every month you have it automatically taken out of your account. You may have an Internet sure. bill, you know, whatever the case is, you have it automatically taken out of your account. Uh, you may have things that come out of your account once a year, you know, or whatever the case is. Or you may have post-dated a check or something to that nature or some mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. somebody may have, you know, let's say... Uh, Use, let's use Comcast again for a hypothetical. Let's say they rec they realize five years later that, you know, hey, you close out your bill, but you still owe them $100, or they owe you $100. Let's say they owe you $100. And mm. let's say you closed your bank account because you moved out of that town. You know, five years ago, I closed my account. And they the only thing they have on record is your card. And so they decide to send yes. that money back to the card. You know, they said, okay, well, you know what? We don't have a way of getting rid of it. We don't have a mailing address, blah, blah, blah. We send it off to this card. Well, that bank has the opportunity now um, to adjust the account and say, okay, well, we got to keep it closed, but we need to adjust it. So we need to find out where they are and write them a check or tell them to come in and get this $100 because we need mm -hmm. to have this balanced out. It needs to be zeroed. Okay. Same thing with a um, if you owe them money. Well, we need to contact them because we need to get this money that we that they owe us because we need to balance this out at zero. Those were set offs and sure. those what adjustments are. Now, what a set off is is uh, our charge off or discharge is let's say after seven years you can't find them. Well, now they can write it off as a loss, and they can yes, take it out of their taxes. Seven years. Yeah, profits and loss. So now they can yes. take it out of their taxes and they'll get compensated out of that, so they don't have to pay. Uh, you know, they don't have to pay a certain amount of taxes. That's what that sure. means. Now, of course, that's a very simplistic explanation of it. But it does not mean that you can write a check on a closed account. Stop the nonsense. On, okay? And, Please and stop what that. Is because this, what that's going to do is get people put in jail. And, and that's going to have to be the result, I would guess. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start seeing the result because I'm, I'm sure we'll hear it from down the line. Those of you who are listening to us, I'm I sure you that, probably know somebody. I really do. I hope the you FBI know, is so yeah. busy that they don't get to them and they send them a letter warning, stop this before we have to come after you. But you got to think about this. When you put a letter in or a complaint into the FBI and a bank puts a letter in or a complaint into the FBI or a larger institution, and they're really, really busy, and they have to prioritize. Who do you think is going to get higher priority? Your complaint yeah, no, or the yeah. banks? 
Now, if they're similar, if the complaints are similar, now, if one is actually, you know, hey, somebody's going around killing somebody, they don't have a choice. They got to go, hey, okay. <laughs> but you actually need to send that to the state and, then, you know, blah, 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 whatever. But anyway, you get my point. They'll prioritize it based on, you know, certain things. And if it's similar in statute, they're going to give theirs more. And the reason that they're going to do that is not just because they love banks, you know, psh, please. They don't love banks, but they realize where their butter is fed. I mean, uh, which side of their bread is buttered. And uh, the banks give more money. Um, to or I shouldn't say I should say get get more money. They have one bank failing is worse, much worse to the economy than one individual failing. If you fail, there's 360. You know, well, again, in the working population, 168 other million people to back up what you just lost, and more coming into the to the fold. If there's a big bank that loses, there's only let's say what 10 big banks. Just hypothetically, there's yeah, just maybe, 10 big banks. Yeah. Well, if one of those fails, then, than yeah, well, it probably is less than that because a lot of them are now merging with one another. They have, you know, mm-hmm. they, uh, joint ventures and so forth. Anyway, the point is, is that um, that bank failing has more of an effect on the economy than you because you are not even 1%. That bank is 10% if there's 10 big banks of sure. the economy. You see sure. what I'm saying? So, um, mm-hmm. You know, so the point is, is that yeah, they're gonna they're gonna go after them first. So you might have you both. When I say that the banks have committed crimes and trying to foreclose, and then you go do this EFT thing, well, both of you have committed crimes. And a lot of people say, well, you fight fire with fire. You know what? I told my mother this morning. I was talking to her. I said, you know what happens when people <laughs> fight fire with fire? You burn the whole damn thing Body down that you were burned. trying to save. Everybody gets burned. You don't <laughs> fight fire with fire. You fight wa- fire with water. Uh-huh. You do. And you put it out with the quick. Now, of course, uh, for, of... for my for my uh, my wonderful uh, firefighters out there, I know there are some cases that you have to snuff out the fire and use explosives and stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay, we're talking about a very simplistic uh, situation, and in and and the majority of the situation, the majority of the time that you have to fight fires is you fight it with water. Mm-hmm. Okay. We're not talking about those exceptions. We're talking about specific, I mean, uh, uh, generalization. And generally, you fight water or fire with water, period. Mm-hmm. And you fight water with a dam. You don't fight water with uh, with fire. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's the thing, you know. So you got to be smart about this. But that's what we're trying to convey to people is that you have to use the sense that you were given at birth and that you grew and developed into, and you have to become your own leaders. Because if you don't, these people that you're always looking for these quick remedies too. Oh, yeah. that's what I'm talking well and that's, that's what we're getting too. at is you gotta study you gotta read you know we'll put out like again if you go to 18 title 18 United States Code 242 or title 42 United States Code um, 480 well, no that's wrong Four, uh, yeah, that's not wrong that's wrong too I can't think of which one it is but it's title 42 you'll see that there are certain um, uh, codifications of what government or your your rights and how they're protected, right? Mm-hmm. Two forty one and two eighteen, two forty one and two forty two are, are really important because that's what you can use. Let's say if you ever get pulled over and you're under a suspended license and you get your car taken in, or or you don't have insurance and you get your car, you know, gets taken away from you. You know, you can get your car back for free. Yeah, a lot of people don't. They don't know that. that. The way that you can get your car back for free is that go to the court and say, wait a minute, is this not is the court a state? Um, is this a state entity that I'm dealing with or is this a uh, a lower level federal in, uh, entity that I'm dealing with mm-hmm. because if I recall correctly uh, and in, th- what you've done is you've committed an in rem action which means you've seized my property from me in violation of the constitutions uh, that of their prime directive I should say uh, you seized my property from me without uh, due process mm-hmm. and um, without a warrant and um, that is an interim action, which is limited to maritime actions, which is exclusively uh, limited to federal or uh, Congress, to federal jurisdiction or Congress. So now the question again I'm going to ask you is, are you a political subdivision of the federal government or are you acting as a state? And then let them answer it. They're not going to answer it. What they're going to do is give you your damn car back until you get out. Yeah. Hurry up and get out of my court. Yeah, now. please hurry up and get out get of my out court. court. You're you yeah. telling too much. They don't. That's why they uh-huh. always put people like us last when it comes to these court mm-hmm. cases. But I've now learned how not to even go in and bother with them. You yeah. know? And that's the key right there. That's yeah. key, brother. I, t- I told you I got can... another parking ticket, right? <laughs> yes, that's right. Now, you did say that. 
I, I'll tell you this again, me being autonomous or living autonomously, I do want to contribute to a point uh, because, again, though I don't agree with the corporate aspect of the way that they're running government, I also know that if it all fails at once, whoo, you're talking about a uh, a big catastrophe. Oh, all hell. Yeah, you're talking about a lot of people starving, a lot of children being hurt, you know, and stuff like that. So I don't want that. But I am not going to support it overall, this system. So, I mean, I'll put money into the, the, the pay stall and stuff like that. And I came out. Now, this one, I came out much late. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. I came out, it was probably about 10 minutes late. So I was like, okay, okay when I got there, I knew there was going to be one because I was at the hospital. I knew there was going to be one. Okay, whatever. So I left it on there and then went back because I was going to put some more in the meter. And then, um, cause we were going to be that one. So anyway, that's like, I left it there. I came back and again, I told you this happened to me in, in April and I sent the letter saying that, Hey, this, uh, instrument is invalid. Instrument is invalid. Um, I haven't committed anything wrong and the instrument is a violation of due process because it says that I've been deemed to commit this infraction in part. And because I haven't legally done anything wrong, I'm not required to initiate a, a case against myself if you feel that I have committed a crime then you have the obligation to initiate one against me and I sent the letter in and I hadn't heard anything I modified it a little bit but I essentially did the same thing now that one was okay. here it was only a couple of weeks ago but the one back in April uh, that I sent back I never heard anything back from him yeah. <laughs> never heard anything back from him yeah, you know and I sent this directly to I put attention to whoever the, uh, the the cop officer's name is and you know what you know, they violate, by doing such things, they violate, you know, their oaths of office. They, they, they don't, you know, in, in the, in the, in, you know, again, you just have to know how to ask questions. That's it. That's, that's, I shouldn't say that's it, but that's one of the main things. You got to know how to ask questions and how to put them into a corner for them to reveal who they are. Make them, yes. it is your responsibility to know any time that you're dealing with a government official that they are legitimate. It is your job. You know why? Because it is your subjects. Think about it this way. You got a house, and you got a butler. All you got a butler, you got a maid, you got janitor, or whatever the case is. You got, and they all got keys to the service entrance or the front door, whatever the case is. What if somebody walks into your house that you've never seen before, and they dressed up as the butler? Are you just gonna let them continue going on butling, butlering? No. Nope. Are you gonna question <laughs> who, the, no. who the hell are you? Why are you in my house? Because mm-hmm. you never know if they casing the joint. They're like, oh, you know, he was all sick today. Wait a minute, I didn't hire you. Nobody told me. Get the hell out. Exactly. Get my key. Chance to change all the locks. You know what I'm saying? You're going to jump on that quickly. But this is your house. This is your house, mm-hmm. and you're not demanding that the servants say who, uh, 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 you know, state to you who they are. And make them prove that they are who they say they are. Just because a cop yeah. comes up in uniform, don't mean jack. No, I want to know who you are. As a matter of fact, I had a cop, I told a cop that I said I don't know who you are. Just because you come up to me in uniform, don't mean nothing. You know what he did? He got on the radio and called more of them. Do you question who we are now? Yeah, I still do. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I'm not gonna fight twenty cops, even though my uncle would. <laughs> but these days yeah. they'll shoot you. Back in this day, they would fight hey, brother, them. And, you know, yeah. to wear them out. But anyway, that's another point. And all you would have had to do is just no retreat, no surrender. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But the point is, is that, you know, since I want to come back to my children, if they arrest me, you know what? I'm going to get in, I'm going to get in front of a court. And if yeah. I don't get in front of a court, then my family and my friends are going to be like, hey, where's, where's Nas? Hey, we demand that y'all bring him mm-hmm. forward. And if they say, hey, Horpus, uh, Horpus, uh, habeas corpus has been suspended. Oh, no, it has not. We don't have a rebellion. Just because you're at war does not mean that there's a rebellion. It's two different things. And what they've been trying to do with the Patriot Act is say that habeas corpus has been suspended because there is a rebellion. No, there is not. The people are not rebelling. They were allegedly attacked by some terrorists, nine terrorists, so they say, who slammed some planes into a building. That's And they call it an act of war. Now, hold on. How are you going to say it's an act of war and you're saying we're under a rebellion? Which one is it? Yeah. Are you saying the people yeah. are uprising? And, 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 and if the people are uprising, yeah. real quick, real quick. And if the people are uprising, that means you need to shut the hell up and listen to see what they're uprising about because that means they're pissed mm-hmm. off about something. And since they're the boss and the boss stands his foot, you better shut up and listen. Mm-hmm. No, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Go ahead with what you were saying. Because if it was an outside, no, I'm just saying, it was an outside job if you're claiming that was. The people didn't engage it. Mm-hmm. You engage it. That's why they claiming it was a so-called... <laughs> indeed, indeed, and so you know it was them. So that's why they claim it as you know. Uh, indeed, and it so was and, an inside job, as Alex Jones would say. It's well, an inside job. and 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 it was, but that doesn't mean that all the government was in on it. I mean, yeah, because no they, doubt, no governments doubt. are so compartmentalized. If you just look at the intelligence uh, agencies, look at that. Look at that movie, um, Green Zone. 
Um, I'm not saying that, you know, I don't know if you like the kind of, it's kind of a combat movie. It's not really. It's just about Iraq and the, the of, intricacies of it. But one of the things it showed is that how the intelligence agencies and the Pentagon and the different uh, factions of the executive office or, or the executive branch, excuse me, are departmentalizing how the right hand doesn't know what the hell the left hand is doing. Yeah. They don't even, they're not even on the same court. They don't even have the same mission. Sometimes uh-huh. they're repugnant to one another and they even fight one another. So uh-huh. look at that and you'll see that it, just because it's, people say it was an inside job doesn't mean the entire government was involved. And for those people that okay. blame, don't get me wrong, I didn't like George Bush and the policies that he created. Or I should say that I didn't like the way the policies that he created. But he didn't know about 9 11. He couldn't have, not yeah. beforehand. That he needs denial, denial. What do they call it? Plausible deniability. Yeah, yeah. It would be. You asinine. see how he was acting anyway. Yeah. When the, when, it mean, would be completely all, asinine. Yeah. It would be the dumbest thing in the world for him to actually know what happened before nine eleven happened. It would just be so idiot. That'd be just the sloppiest thing in the world. And I don't think that they're that sure. sloppy. Yeah, I'm sure he probably had an idea. He, of, I mean, I'm sure he knew afterwards he that he knew, he hey, this is our chance to make dough, and you know, we know that it really wasn't them, but we're gonna we're gonna move along with this because they'd be embarrassed otherwise. You got to think about that. The government is not gonna say that it's not in control of itself, exactly. even if there even if there is. What they're gonna do is gonna have a media blackout. If there, let's say, there's a rendition of the military that branches off somewhere in the states, and they say, <laughs> you know what, we're gonna take this town over, forget this, we're not following the President Obama anymore. They're gonna shut that down. They're gonna uh, um, uh, black out that media, you know, black out the media, and they're gonna go take care of it. And they're not gonna let us know about it. And then they're gonna require that everybody find to sign disclosures and not say anything about it. And of course, people are gonna talk about it, but then they're not gonna. The government's not gonna acknowledge it, or they're gonna deny it and say, "Hey, they're cool." Sure, especially when you got control of the media. Exactly. I mean, you know, literally. But hey, real quick, so, we're I mean, coming up on uh, two hours here, so we're at one forty-nine right now. Yeah, <laughs> we had a long conversation, huh? <laughs> Love to do it again, but I want people to make sure that they listen to this, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. We could probably keep it down to about 45 at the longest, try to hook it up later on in these next future. Right, right. Well, you know, no worries with this if they, you know. Yeah, it's all good. There's it, no man. limits. So, so um, you know, again, Nasator, what is it called? Nasator Associates, look that up. Look up uh, trade and business in the United States Code. Um, I think we already gave it 267701. Uh, look up um, what else are we talking about? Oh, if you're in Washington or even in your own state, look up if you're doing your if you're doing um, property taxes or paying oh. property taxes. You know, okay. look up the authorization for the state to demand or to receive uh, property taxes and make sure property that tax. it's yeah, and make sure it's legitimate. You know, I yeah, would suggest no that it's not because it's it's based on a feudal law system. And that's what it is, feudal yeah. law system. Yeah, and, period. A, and a feudal law system is is not a legal, uh, not a legitimate system here. <laughs> it's not why what you think wanted. they took yeah, why you think they took out the land patents and Well and the thing uh, is they so didn't take out the land patents. People don't believe no. in the land patents anymore, but hold on. Yeah. You got all these people as a matter of fact that's a good uh point real quick. You got all these people that saying, Oh the pan land patents are a hoax, they're they're not you know, they're somebody shysting you. Well hold on, go to the B L M and try and put in land patents and I bet you some things oh, yeah. come up. I mean we do our research based on the BLM. <laughs> BLM if you don't know is Bureau of Land Management. And they let you research land patents. So don't tell me land patents don't exist and they're not legitimate because, first of all, you can't say it's archaic law. When have we ever been, uh, when has our our law system been changed? We changed certain variants in law, specific laws, you know, but we don't change the overview or the the foundation of the law because then that's when you change from a free uh, democracy, or uh, what we call it, democracy, a republic form of government, <laughs> to a completely different form of government, and that's never been legitimized. Okay, we're supp- yeah. still supposedly, uh, allegedly under a republic, and until they want to actually come out right and just say, "Hey, we're just taking this over, uh, and we're ready to battle for it," until they do that, we're under a republic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, not a democracy. And if you get, if you fall for that trick, then you know what? <laughs> Good luck. Um, but yeah. democracy is mob rule, and I think my people had enough of mob rules. We've come oh, across a lot time. of mobs. Big I'm time. cool with mobs. I got something for a mob. <laughs> I might not be able to get you all, but if you're going to take me, some of you coming with me. I'm just yeah, saying. Indeed. We're going to all meet up in there. Unless y'all coming to love me, and I was like, hey, I'll give y'all your big hugs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I love making <laughs> friends more than I do enemies, but by all means, indeed. I'm not going to let them take me out. But there you go bro hopefully that was but it's uh, all good nah brother that's how we gotta do it and we'll keep this up and get it going man 
It's yeah, we'll probably we'll try to keep it shorter time. next time for y'all, so it's, you're not sitting here all day just listening to us. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Because we're gonna be, like I said, we're gonna get in some other subject matters that's gonna uh, make some heads turn. We always do anyway, oh, yeah, so that sure. that's the good thing about it. We always making some heads turn, get some things going on. But uh, we definitely want to hear from you. You know, you got all the emails. You got us right here. We live on technothusiast.com. We live at my sovereign world uh, on wordpress.com. So you can get us everywhere. Don't give up your house.com. You can always get up, reach us there for those of you who's having these um, home problems, even if you're not having these house problems. Yeah, you don't, you don't you know have to be going on the Just foreclosure. You don't have to be going on the foreclosure to stop them from yeah. uh, stop paying somebody illegally. You, you know, the whole point is, is that you don't owe them money. I don't care no if, it's, uh, if you're behind or not. You don't owe them jack. Exactly. So these are things we try to address. To get, not try, we do we address do. Yeah. so that you get an understanding of what's going on and understanding. And like I always say, do your own research. Definitely, you hear us, what we talking about, boom, boom, boom. Go out, find, do your own research. Yeah. Go find, go look at this stuff. You know, and if we prove us wrong, that's what we want. Yeah. Prove us wrong. Yeah. We're out here. That's what we're here for. <laughs> to learn and keep on learning. So, Because I want to be right. Note, I don't want to uh, be wrong. want to say something. All I got to say, man, is look, it starts with you. If you want to be free, be free. Whatever you are is what you say you are. Or excuse me, whatever you say you are is what you are. Whatever you can or cannot do is true. It's what you can or cannot do, period. You limit yourself. Be masterful. Indeed. And on that note, peace, love, and happiness. Protect.